Hey everybody, this is Chris, and today we are doing something similar, but uh, this we'll just call this version two. And um, what this is going to be is this is going to be your golden gate. <laughs> this is going to be the one and only Hubson Zeno video you need for repairs. How can you do that in one video and keep it short? Well, you just add other videos to it. So what I'm going to do is we are going to make this video here something you've already seen me do, which is take apart the Zeno. But that's all this video is going to be in the beginning. So pay attention. <laughs> We're going to completely take apart the whole Zeno except for the arms. So it doesn't matter if you have a black Zeno or a white Zeno. Same thing. They're just a different color. But basically we are going to take apart everything within the main frame and take the camera and gimbal apart and uh, I've already done one uh, for doing like the ESC's and motors so we're leaving the arms alone I'm not getting into that uh, unless I crash my Zeno I am not taking the arms off because it's a pain in the butt um, and it's one where you can do further damage and get a little more costly so what we're going to do and I'm trying to try to make this as quick as possible to make this your one and only go to video. And for you new people to Zeno that don't know all the crazy stuff and things that you have to do to it to repair it. Um, this is your dream channel right here. So click that subscribe button right now. Uh, you're going to have this video completely showing you how to take every single thing apart and out of the Zeno. Um, and then for, Along the way, you'll see little little tabs at the bottom of the screen that will say, hey, basically, hey, I've got a video on this. Uh, it'll be in a thumbnail at the end of the video. So at the very end of this video that you're gonna about to watch now on how to take the Xeno apart, you're gonna find a bunch of thumbnails that you can click on. They're video thumbnails, basically links, and they'll be titled. So You'll watch this video, you'll learn how to take everything apart, then you'll click on those thumbnails, and those thumbnails will be how to replace the, the whole camera and gimbal with a brand new one using the new software tool that Hubson has and the new hardware tool that's required for installing a brand new camera. Um, you'll find things like how to replace the Good old classic ribbon cable on the camera gimbal that keeps breaking on people because Hubson told them it was a reset and it's not a reset. It's you're plugging it back in basically and if you push in the wrong spot, which is so easy to do, that cable breaks. If it breaks just one little thread that can be soldered and fixed, hats off to you guys that know how to do that. My eyes, my hands shaking aren't that aren't good enough to do that I'd rather replace the whole cable so you're gonna get a video on how to replace that cable uh, you're gonna get a video on how to repair your gyro or barometer I call it barometer uh, a lot of a lot of the ones I've taken in and repaired for people that are subscribers or members to my channel uh, group um, they break that cable so many people break that cable so I've stocked up on that cable because when I get the Zeno, I open it up, go to fix stuff that is not related to the, that, and I see, oh, it's got a broken cable. So now I have that. I try to stock up on parts for repairing other people's quads, and I do find that uh, just opening one up that somebody's worked on, that's how I can figure out what I need to inventory myself uh, to fix these quads for people. I'm over 20 Zenos fixed for subscribers and for members of my group I've only got one that's been sitting here since last winter and uh, it's a lot more complicated than any I've had um, but we're getting there and I'm not gonna fail on that one I'm gonna finish that one and give myself a hundred percent track record on these uh, I'm very good at fixing these um, I may not be your big technical guy that gets real in-depth in the electronics and the antennas frequencies and all that kind of stuff uh, but a lot of time those guys can't do the technical stuff. I'd much more be the technical guy that can get in there and not technical, the, the fix it guy, uh, the handy guy that can actually get in there and fix this stuff. Um, so we're not going to do any of my videos like Hubson does in their official videos uh, where they, you know, 
tell you to say the the ribbon cables coming from the gimbal and camera they're glued to the board they just go and pop them right off and that's not what you want to do uh, I use this is actually a surgical scalpel for cutting people open not me but uh, my brother uh, works at a hospital and he supplies me with these these are great for the hobby but I simply just take this and I cut the edges where the plugs are where they have glue loosen up that glue just give it a score so it has a place to break loose then pop it free and you'll notice it'll pop and break the glue right where you scored it with your razor knife you just always want to be careful and not slip and cut other things uh, some people reheat them I don't like to heat up the boards or anything like that but we're getting off track these are the things that I'm going to show you that Hubson does not show you plus if you speak English or understand at least my version of English um, you get you get me explaining along the way and heeding caution about certain things like cutting the glue loose and not just popping things off and how to be very careful with the ribbon cables and things like that so enjoy this video click that subscribe button and the bell and you'll get future notification of other content and with this video you'll have like I said all the knowledge to take the Xeno apart and then as time goes on and I add more clickable thumbnails at the end of this video you will have a video for everything involving the Hubson um, as far as repair replacement fix how to's on you know certain little things uh, little things that the Hubson Xeno requires so um, this really truly will be your one and only go-to video that you need so uh, hopefully it's beneficial to you because that is what I, I started out with this channel that was my main platform was how to's tutorials little mods um, just educating people how to do it yourself uh, you gotta remember this is a hobby even if you receive it in its it's damaged it's much more of a pain in the butt to send it back deal with the seller deal with the company that makes the product um, parts are so cheap on most all these quads just fix it yourself that's part of the hobby that's part that I enjoy anyhow so don't say I can't do it at least try it if you fail send it to me I'll fix it but um, enjoy the video and uh, definitely give me that thumbs up because I have taken my Xeno apart I can't tell you how many times and I'm gonna continue taking it apart I have my one that's a sacrificial lamb uh, so fortunately I have others that I can fly uh, but the other one pretty much spends its life it didn't know it in production but in production it was destined to sit on my workbench and be taken apart countless times so I can make these videos for you um, it's a bit tiresome to take it apart put it together take it apart put it together but I can do this in my sleep now um, so uh, hopefully that deserves a subscription a thumbs up an attaboy something um, and yeah as always always comment uh, I enjoy everybody's comments for the most part and uh, thank you for watching my video enjoy this one and uh, definitely take it and, and share it in other groups help other people uh, understand how to fix the Xeno properly and um, do what the hobby is all about fix it yourself so um, I know some people physically just cannot do that uh, but it will give you the knowledge to maybe have a friend do it for you or something like that so um, I always try to you know make it so uh, you, you know what tools I'm using give you the links for parts and things like that so I'll continue to do all that and try to make this uh, what I'm claiming it to be and that's your one and only go to uh, Xeno so this is like I said for all you new Xeno owners especially you're un unaware of all the things that uh, in are involved with the Xeno if you crash it if you do a bad firmware update stuff like that uh, this is your this is your dream channel <laughs> um, so that's it Enjoy the video.
Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe, thumbs up, you know the drill. Take care. This is Chris and today we're going to do a video that's very similar to the other videos I've done and that's taking the Hubson Zeno apart. Uh, what we're going to do, I'm, I'm going, the reason I'm doing it this way is uh, we're going to do things a little differently. I'm just going to do a video on how to take it apart and that would be for the main body. Um, that's all this video is going to be so that way I just have one video showing you how to take it apart and then there's going to be a series of videos to follow this and uh, they're going to be mainly all focused on the camera gimbal combination and uh, one of those will be repairing or replacing the cables as you see this is a very common problem uh, a lot of people have sent me their xenos and i've worked on just uh, about 21 or 22 xenos now a majority of them are problems with the camera and gimbal and the other problems are just simple um, problems after updating the firmware. So these are all leftovers from uh, Xenos that I have worked on and I'm happy to say I've worked on all of them successfully except I have one waiting on parts. Uh, still waiting on parts. This one's been waiting with me for a long time. But we're just going to take this apart and then we're going to have other videos to follow. So subscribe to the channel. You got some good stuff coming up. And if you own a Xeno, this is something you're going to want to know how to do, uh, especially when it comes to the video I do when I replace the camera with a new camera. Uh, replacing the camera with a new camera requires special software and a special tool. And that video will be coming up uh, hopefully here soon as well. So right now, let's go ahead and just take the Xeno apart, and that's all this video is going to be. And I know Hubson has already done this themselves, but in their videos, they don't talk, they don't explain to you how to do things and be careful in the process so you do not end up with this problem here. Um, a lot of people have tried working on their own, and this is the result right here, uh, and then that that fake reset button Hubson has told everybody about. It's really just a plug and all you're doing is reseating the plug. You're not resetting anything. You're reseating that plug into its socket. You press on it in the wrong spot, you break the cable, and if you completely break the cable in half, you're done. So let's go ahead and take this apart now. We're going to take this black cover off. And I'm just going to go around it and unsnap it. This is a great tool to have for something like this. And uh, let's zoom in so you get a good look at the Xeno while we're doing this. That should be good right there. So next we're going to remove these two back. Oh, let's take this power button off. And the one thing I always forget in my videos, take your battery out. <laughs> so we're going to remove these two screws right here. Let's take these out. And we'll move along kind of fast here and you just pause the video wherever you need. Okay, remove those two. Now we're going to flip it over. And we're going to remove this back gimbal bracket and the front gimbal bracket. They hold the top on and they kind of work so the gimbal doesn't overextend. So I remove those two screws. Now I just simply am going to take a pair of pliers or <laughs> tweezers and you can move the forward the camera forward. It won't hurt anything to push it forward. Lay that aside. Now we're going to take this one here out. 
Sorry, it's hard for me to see. I'm trying not to get my head underneath the camera. So we've removed that screw. Take the tweezers. And I dropped the screw. So if you drop the screw, just take your Zeno. Turn it upside down and grab the screw. So we remove those. Now let's take these two screws out. They don't always come out. Sometimes they just stay in there. Even if you turn it around and shake it, sometimes they just stay there. That's fine. So now we remove these two screws. Let's flip it over. And they stayed in there. So now the only other screws we have to remove are underneath the tape here on the shoulders. And you're going to want to buy some more of this. Uh, you can order it through Hupson. I'll put a link in the video because after you do this a few times, it doesn't want to stick anymore, obviously. Peel it back. Take the little tablet out. There's your screw. Take the screw out. Then you have this piece here. Take that out. And now I just push that tape back over gently. I never take the, the sticker off. That way it stays in alignment. So now we take this pill out. Pill, tablet, whatever you want to call it. Cover. Take this screw out. Okay, so now everything's ready to lift. We're gonna lift it this way because you have a wire here or a plug here and a plug here. Now there's gonna be some white glue on there. You don't wanna pull these plugs out without loosening up that glue or you'll pull the whole socket out of the board. This is one of the reasons I wanna tell you to do the video and tell you things like this so you don't make that mistake. So you simply want to cut a little groove into the glue here and here. Sometimes it's on the back side, but you want to just cut that glue loose anywhere that you see it. And then you want to take and just put your nails under the tabs and unplug it might block it here I'm sorry okay one two so now that's done so we just put that aside okay so now we're just going to lay this aside you want to be very careful remember with that cable and then we're going to remove this it only it just snaps in the back so you lift it here and it unsnaps real simple now we want to remove this piece of sticky back foam. Now yours is going to come off harder. I've already had mine off before. It's starting to lose that stick. So we remove that and then you see you have your cables here and they plug into the board right here. So you want to be very careful taking this off because it's glued. So you want to peel it back when you do it. Okay, just set it aside. And then you have glue here, 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 and here. You want to be very careful and just kind of loosen that glue up a little bit. 
I do not recommend you try to pop those off without loosening up the glue first. That's how you can do damage. If you watch the, the video that Hubson does, it's still glued and they pry them right off. I don't recommend you do that. So we're, we, I've already got the glue loose. We're gonna pop that one. And we're gonna pop that one. When there's no glue, it's so much easier. So take that. Peel your tape very, or your peel the sticking ribbon cable very carefully. You don't want to damage those cables if they're not already broken. So now you have your supports or shock absorbers, whatever you want to call them. And actually I'm going to use a screwdriver. I just take a very tiny screwdriver and you just press them down like that. Like that. Just like that. Push your ribbon cables down through. Okay, and now you can lift up and it's out. So now it's out and you can put it aside. So now I'm not going to remove anything else to do the camera and gimbal. Um, if you were just replacing, say, the barometer, that comes with, you can buy just the barometer or just the cable. And so that will be a separate video just showing you that. I want to try to keep all separate videos for separate repairs. So I'll show, I'll do another video on just replacing the barometer and uh, the power board, how to replace that, and then how to replace the main board as well. If you're replacing this, you want to be very careful with the plug here and extremely careful with that cable. Um, I have several of these cables already broken uh, from people trying to take them out and finding out that they're very delicate. So the plug is right there. And the best thing I can tell you to do is get yourself a, a little pry tool like I use to get underneath it. Now the one I have is too, um, uh, wide to get in there. So what I'm going to do is we're just going to lift this over and I'm going to take a little screwdriver and get underneath that plug. And then I'm going to put my hand on that plug and lift it very carefully. There's some glue on it. Okay. So we've removed that successfully. There you are. And then you have Wi-Fi antennas underneath here. Your power board plugs to the main board here. And then another ribbon cable that goes underneath the quad. So what we're going to do is remove the Wi-Fi cover, the Wi-Fi module cover. And um, actually it's easier if we go ahead and pull the board up some to do that. So let's go ahead and undo our power cable. And again, what you want to do is you want to cut your glue on each side of it. Take a little screwdriver or a pry tool, carefully pop it off, 
and I just fold it back a little bit, okay? And then you wanna remove this cover. It just snaps in place. You can simply get your fingernails under it and then peel it back. It, it just snaps right in there. It's very easy to take off. And we want to unplug this right here. Okay. And before unplugging that, remember, you want to remove the glue here and remove the glue here. Then pop it off. Be careful with your surrounding electronics. So now that's out of the way, let's take the four screws out that hold the main board in place. One, two, three, Now we can lift the board up. Now lifting this board up, you can access this cover better. And you can take a screwdriver or you can take one of these tools and put under it and it's a lot harder to get off. So sometimes what you have to do is you have to pry the side open a little bit so it's not so tight and then get it to pop off. And then it comes off like that. You have your two antennas. Be careful and just unplug those. Just like that. and then you remove the board. Okay, now the board is out. So the only thing you're left with is this power board here. So if you're replacing that, you simply take these two screws out. Lift the board out, and then you put in your new one. Then there's a little tab here, just sits right in place. You can take that out. And then if you have to replace this board, which we are not doing, because you have a whole bunch of wires that we would need to unsolder. You unsolder these for this, ESC and motor and obviously the rest go up the up to the other arms so these all run to the ESCs for the motors and that's all they do and then back here is where you have your plug for the battery right there and it does come out easily I think if I recall just slides out like that. So once it's unsoldered, it's easy. The only thing holding that in place is that little white bracket that we took out. This bracket right here is what holds that down. Just like that. That's all that holds that in place. So that is how you take the Xeno apart. Now let's put it all back together again. <laughs> so let's put this back. Put our power board back on and it just lines up. It, it's got little holes here where it lines and snaps into place. Hold it, screw it down.
okay? You can even buy this ribbon cable here too. If you ever need to replace that, you can buy that as a separate part as well. They sell all the ribbon cable now for the Xeno. And um, got the bracket back, we got that board back. I just wanna make sure I do it in the right order so we don't have to take stuff back out. So now we can put the board back in. You wanna bring your wires over here. Bring the board in. Go ahead and plug these in now. It's easiest if you just plug them in right now. Be careful putting them back. Just make sure they line up. And you know, they're not easy obviously when you're making a video. Okay, put those back. And then you wanna put your cover back on. You can bend it back the way it was so it snaps on tighter. Put it on this side first and then snap it. Okay, make sure your plugs are not gonna get pinched and it snaps into place. Just like that. So now these two wires are gonna go push down into a groove down here. So this is where it might be hard with the camera, but you wanna take each wire and push it down in that groove like that. And then bring the board over and set it into place just like that. Okay, so now we can screw the board back down. Our four screws in the corners. Last one. Last one's always a charm. Okay, so that's back. Now we wanna put this barometer back. It's real easy to line up, but it's so tiny. You just wanna make sure you feel it and get it to snap into place. And it's very hard for me to show you and not block it, but you'll feel it. Just wanna be very careful. There we go, it just snaps right back in place. It lines up perfectly with this right here. So you just wanna line the front of it up with that. You're in the general area and you'll feel it kind of fall in and then snap, okay? So we put that back. Let's put this cover, well, let's snap everything back together first. Plug this back in. Same thing. You hear it snap. Let's plug this one back in. Hear it snap. Now those are back in. This is something very good to use. You just get yourself some of this and I use a paintbrush. Take a paintbrush and you just simply put some of it on a paintbrush and you can put it right on the sides of your plugs. Put it on that one and that one. And then when we put the gimbal plugs back on, you can use it for that as well. Liquid tape, it works really well. So now, now that we've 
put liquid tape on the plug. We can snap, snap this back into place and you just want to line up the track. It's got a little track that it goes into. Okay, very simple. Just snaps right into place. Okay. So we have that back in place. Now we can put the camera slash gimbal back in the quad. Uh, I did not screw this down, so I'm gonna hold it with my finger. But when we put this back in, uh, wanna be first thing we wanna do is, of course, be very careful with these and guide them back into these slots with our hand. So for that, I tilt it backwards. I'm gonna go ahead and put one screw down in there. There's one in there, so we can just tighten that one up. Okay, that way it won't fall out. So we're gonna tilt this backwards, and we're just gonna go into these slots here. So line that one up. And you just want to wiggle them in place. Okay. And then what I do is I like to look, I look down through the nose right here. And that way I can line the rubber pieces into the hole, the four holes at the same time. Just like that. Now here's something very important. I've received some quads where these are ripped and it's from pulling them too hard. All you have to do is pull it a little bit and I go in a circular motion and it just guides it right through. Circular motion. Just like that. Now the gimbal's in place. You want to plug these back in and you're going to line up just line it up with your old glue marks that's the easiest way to do it and then lightly touch don't force it because you can damage the pins when you get it lined up you'll feel it snaps right into place same thing with this one just line it up to your glue marks you'll feel it get into place and then you'll feel it snap, okay? And that snapped right in. So then you wanna push these back down. This one's lost its stick. Put this back in place, line it up right here, and it'll drop right into place there, okay? So now we take this piece, it goes back over to these plugs. And again, that's where the liquid tape comes in handy. You can simply take it and put some on the brush, dab it on the back of this. Lay it on top of your plugs and it sticks. What that does is it keeps pressure so that those plugs don't come undone. So if you see Hubson's video where they say, take your thumbs and squeeze right here, that's what you're doing. You're squeezing those plugs back into place. It's pushing the metal plate on top of the plugs and forcing them to go in. Um, not a good permanent fix, but it's a uh, typical Hubson fix. Let's just say that. So I'm going to take this screw back out now. And we're just going to lift this up. Slide this under. Snap it in down here. Fold down our rubber pieces. 
And this one's been off so many times it doesn't snap back in place, but that's fine. As long as, as long as it's in place down here. When we put the cover on, it'll hold it down right there. So we're back in place here. We're gonna screw this back down. And you do not need brass screws here. The barometer's all covered up. The only brass screws you need are the ones that screw the barometer inside here. So we have all that back on. And the only other pieces we have to put back together are the rest of the body parts. So we take this and we plug it in over here. I know I keep blocking the camera, but push that down. Push that down. And then the same thing, you can take some liquid tape, put it on your paintbrush, put it in there, hold it in place. And now we're just gonna flip it back over. and reverse what we did before. But just to hold it in place, I'm gonna go ahead and start with these two back screws. It doesn't matter what order we put these screws back in. Okay, go ahead and put the other pieces, the other screws back in. Remember they stayed, they did not fall, so we can go ahead and just tighten these down. Okay, now we're gonna put the front parts back in and the best way to do it is get your screw started first. So I always put the screw, I always put the screw in there. Let's do it this way. If you have a magnetic screwdriver, utilize that. You can get the screw started. That way you don't fumble like I'm doing and drop it. <laughs> so there's a little track in the front and we just want to put it into that track, which I can't see because I'm trying to stay out of the camera. Okay, see it's right there in the front. Now we're gonna screw that in place. The screws are already in this. I suggest you put the screws in that and then you can just set this into place like that and you don't drop the screws. Now we just tighten them up. They might not be lined up here. There we go. Okay, so now that's all back together. And the only ones left to do are the shoulders. So we peel these back. These only go in one way, so you turn them until they fall into place. And then you put your screw back.
Put these back. And fold down the label. And then same on the other side. And while we're doing this last part, I'll go ahead and just say, remember this is for videos to come on fixing the other stuff. That way we have a separate video for just taking the clod apart by itself. And then on the other videos, we can be quick and short and focus on just making the repair for those folks who already know how to take this apart. And at this time, I'll also say thank you very much for watching my video. In my other videos, you can click on the video tab and go through there and find other useful stuff. And as always, hit that subscribe button and give that thumbs up on the way out. I've put the power button back in place. Okay. And then I always snap the back on first and work my way up to the front. Because if you do it the opposite way, sometimes that falls out of place and then doesn't work you don't have a power button so everything is back together we don't have any parts laying around we have the gimbal in place and at this time you can put your battery back in you can power it back up and be done with it so uh, videos to come one more time just so you know the videos to come are going to be uh, repairing the camera gimbal with a new cable and replacing it with a whole new camera which is a big video because it requires a special piece of software a software tool and it requires a tool that you put on the gimbal while you're getting it all set and calibrated so basically it's a, a gimbal install calibration tool is what I'm going to mm -hmm. call it. They call it a calibration tool, but um, you need it mainly for when you're installing a new one um, to set all the access points basically. Uh, so you're kind of setting the home position for all the servo motors. And in good old typical Hubson fashion, uh, it's quite, quite an ordeal. <laughs> Nothing's ever real simple with them. Uh, it'll be easy for me, but if you're not computer savvy, uh, you may not like it like that. So uh, there you have it. We took it apart. We put it all back together again. And uh, stay tuned for that next video on how to repair your gimbal with the cable and to how to repair how to replace it with a new motor those are going to be big videos because uh, this is a big problem and when i say big videos i mean very important videos because uh, this is something everybody's been waiting for to to have the special tools to install a new camera gimbal so uh, we'll get that video to you as soon as i possibly can and thanks one more time for watching subscribing and uh being such great people in your comments. Take care.